you excited to be here today? Fantastic. Well, we've come to a special time at this moment. Um, first of all, I want you to be seated. Just be seated very briefly. I want you to be seated very briefly. If, there, if there's anyone outside, ushers, please help them get a seat. If not, some people may have to sit on the floor. And as much as possible, let there be minimal movement so that we can all receive the word of God. Amen. Amen. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I want to welcome you to our He Gave Gifts Unto Men conference. I believe, I believe for me, this is a very, very special day. And firstly, I would like to thank our prophet, Bishop Dakiwood Mills. I would like to thank our prophet. If it wasn't for him, if it wasn't for him, if it wasn't for him, there wouldn't be a church here in Aston. You may be seated. If it wasn't for him, there wouldn't be a church here in Aston. If it wasn't for his sacrifice, if it wasn't for his vision, there wouldn't be a church over here. And also, I want to thank him because if it wasn't for him, trust me, Bishop Joshua will not be here on a Saturday night. I know that for a fact. So I want to say thank you to our prophet for the vision that he has for churches and for pastors. And I think we must also say a big thank you to our pastor, Bishop Richard. And, you know, I want to tell you, I want to tell you why, I want to tell you why we should thank our pastor, Bishop Richard, because if Bishop Joshua is here today, on a Saturday, at the Jesus Encounter service, it's not because of me. You see, I tried, but I failed. But, we, but when our pastor, Bishop Richard, stepped in, that's why we have him here practically today at our Jesus Encounter service. So I want to say a big thank you to our pastor, Bishop Richard, for all of this. You may be seated once again. And you know, for me personally, um, why it's also special is because of who Bishop Joshua is to me. And I'm sure at this moment he's cringing, but it's okay. Um, he's been a real blessing in my life. You know, in life, there are people who come by and there are channels of blessing. The Bible says that I can see or I've recognized that I have been blessed for thy sake. So when some people come into your life, they bless you and you encounter different things in your life due to their presence. Due to his presence in my life, I am a better pastor. Um, I'm a better teacher. I have copied nearly all the messages that he's preached. Yes. Um, I'm a better pastor. What I have in my life today is an, as a result of his influence over me. So it's very special to me because of who he is. So first I've asked him, if you are ready today to receive the word of God and to receive the gift that we have today, with Jesus joy, with Jesus shall help me welcome Bishop Joshua. Amen. Wow. Amen. Amen. What a blessing. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Please. Thank you. Thank you very much. Amen. Let's pray. Let's pray. Just um, close your eyes for two seconds with me. Let's pray. Holy Spirit, we are so grateful to you for your goodness. Thank you for your presence that's with us right now. Thank you that when we need you, you are right there. Oh, Holy Spirit, let your presence fill this place. And Lord, let your will be done. The Lord God has given me the tongue of the learned that I may speak a word in season to him that is weary. Let your will be done, Lord. We need to hear from you. Everyone here needs to hear from you, Lord. Most of all, we need to meet you, Lord. Allow us to meet you. In Jesus' name I pray. And everyone said amen. amen. You may be seated. 
Thank you. God bless you. Um, <laughs> I can't believe I'm here. Please. 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 I don't know why you're shouting. Please. Please sit down. Please, I beg you. I beg you, please sit down. I ask you to please sit down. I want to, I want to honor um, my father, Bishop Dag Heward Mills, um, because um, you may be seated. So much of what we know about the Lord comes from his servants. Jesus said, if you had known me, you would have known my father. And so knowing the one that the Lord sends allows us to know him. And perhaps the greatest task of a man of God or a servant of God is to bring us into the knowledge of God or to know God for ourselves. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 4 verse 11, and to some he gave apostles, prophets, evangelists, some pastors, some teachers uh, for the edifying of the saints, perfecting of the saints, the work of the ministry, and the edifying of the body. Then it says, until we all come to the knowledge of Christ. Are you there? Oh, there we go. Until we come to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God. And so, I believe the greatest part of our prophet's ministry is helping us to know God for ourselves and be able to come closer to the Lord. And so, we honor him today and what God has used him to do. Amen. I bring you his love, by the way. I was with him just a few days ago. And he sends his love. And I'm here, I'm here with his permission. I should also say, Amen. I also want to honor my pastor, Bishop Richard. You know, for me, um, I'll tell you plainly that I was not coming. And uh, I saw him by the side of the road. And I hadn't seen him for a long time, so I went to hug him. When the hug was ending, he said, so we'll be seeing you in a few weeks. I said, yes, please. <laughs> um, but uh, for me, the great miracle is, you know that thing he gave gifts unto men? I don't know, they had a sign somewhere. That thing means that, like, there's a gift. <laughs> and the gift is a man. You know, like when it says in Ephesians 4, he ascended on high and he gave gifts unto men. That's the scripture. And he gave some like apostles. Hey, Pastor Kofi, good to see you. He gave some apostles, prophets. So for me, for Bishop Richard to think of me as a gift is the miracle is over. It doesn't really matter what I preach. <laughs> because, um, yeah. You also have a pastor, so you know how it is. Yeah, he's been my pastor since 2011. So it's been 11 years. And so for me, it's just, I'm so shocked that he thinks that like, when I preach, or that I'm a gift. I don't know if you get what I'm saying, yeah. So that's an honor. And um, he, next week, I think, I don't know what today's day, what's today's date? 22nd, hi Dan. 22nd, in five days time, will be nine years since he appointed me as a pastor. Yeah, right, right in, um, in First Love Church in London. And we were in the something studio. I don't remember. Drama studio, well done. And I don't think we were more than 40 people or 30 people. And he said from today, when you see him, don't call him Joshua, call him Pastor Joshua. Yeah. And so everywhere in the world that people call me Pastor Joshua is because of him. So I honor him today. And um, I confess that I'm very nervous to preach in this church. And so, oh, you, you don't understand. <laughs> so, I spoke to him just a few hours, maybe two or three hours ago. And um, I was just thanking him for the privilege and the opportunity to be with you. And um, I want to say thank you to Pastor Kent. And um, <laughs> Honestly, I remember... When he first asked me where I was standing, I remember how ridiculous this guy is, completely ridiculous. It wasn't going to happen. But um, 
I believe it's God's will for us to be here. So thank you to Kent and Yovela and all the pastors. And thank you all of you, okay? And um, I'm grateful and honored to be here. Amen. Amen. I came with my wife. And so... I wanted to come up and say hello for two minutes. Yeah. Hello, everybody. I didn't know it was going to be called, but it's a blessing to be here. It's my first time here, and I love it already. And I know we're going to have a great time. So just sit back, relax, and enjoy. God bless you. Amen. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, now we can get to the word of God. Um, you guys are so noisy. Sit down. Sit down. Now, I would like for you to close your eyes with me. Stay seated. Just close your eyes. No need to bow your head. Just close your eyes. And I want you to lift up your hands. Um, I just want you to speak in tongues and just welcome the presence of the Holy Spirit. A little volume, something heavenly, please. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Oh, thank you, Lord. Fill this place, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Let your cloud fill this room. Let your presence fill this room. His presence is filling this place. Oh, His presence fills this place. I have filled the hungry, but the rich I have sent empty. Oh, Holy Spirit, we reach out to you. We are hungry for you. Oh, Holy Spirit, let your presence fill this place.
come on worship you. Hallowed be your name. Sing it one more time. You are awesome. softly, softly, softly. Mighty God. Yes. You are Expressions and revelations and revelations, revelations of your power. Remember your love more than wine. Let your presence fill every heart, every mind. Let your presence fill this place. Let it transform us and change us. Lord, when we finally get home tonight, allow us to say that we met you, that we heard from you, that you touched us, that we experienced you. Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I'm in the presence of my king. Please sit down. You know, when you don't know how to preach, you sing a lot of songs to while away the time. You see. Oh, do you feel the presence of the Lord? And I think that's what I'm going to talk to you about today. The presence of God. Um, turn with me quickly to Exodus chapter 24. One. Oh, thank you, Lord. The Lord is already touching so many people tonight. Oh, yes. Now let's read. What does it say? Then he said unto Moses, Come up unto the Lord, thou and Aaron and Nadab and Abihu and seventy of the elders of Israel. 
and worship ye afar off. And Moses alone shall come near the Lord, but they shall not come nigh, neither shall the people go up with him. Amen. Uh, this is the case for so many Christians today. Worship from afar. Serve the Lord, but from far. And most of us never really experienced the presence of God. And today I want to share with you about this problem. I don't want you to have a form of Christianity that does not experience God's presence. The Holy Spirit is a real person, more real than we think. And the Holy Spirit longs for you to know Him. And you cannot know God unless you know His presence. Because you can talk to somebody on the phone for a long time. You can receive text messages. You can read books about somebody. But unless you meet the person, you can't really know the person. And it's possible to worship God and to serve God and to preach for Him and to sing for Him and to dance for Him and not actually know the Lord. And so the presence of God, that's God himself being present with you, is very important. And because of how we've, how we've come to understand God, we see God as somebody who is very far away. And we see God's word as a letter that God some t composed many years ago which we are all struggling to finish reading okay even now okay you know, I'm not so good at preaching I'm better at talking so I'm just talking to you but what I'll tell you what I'll tell you is that the presence of God is something that the Lord intended for each of us to have an experience that God is with me. A lot of people say God is with me, but He's not. The presence of God. The Holy Spirit is a person. You know, I've had the privilege of meeting a number of very great men of God in my life. Not because of me, because of my fathers. I've had the chance to meet many very great servants of God. And God is using all of them wonderfully. But some of them are cut above the rest because not, not, not even because of what they are doing but because you can sense a presence you're not a presence in church Moses said if your presence will not go with you so the presence is supposed to go home with you you're supposed to have the presence of God at work you're supposed to have the presence of God on the bus. You're supposed to have the presence of God while you type at the computer at work. That's what God intended for you. And you know, I remember, something keeps coming to my mind. I remember sitting in, in our church in Accra and listening to Prophet preach in one day. Recently, not too long, maybe about three months, four months ago. And I remember him coming down the stage as he was preaching stillness I remember my whole body going numb as he walked past me because there's somebody with you and I'm saying to you I want you to go home tonight okay not saying that you came to hear me Josh I want you to go home saying you came to meet the Lord and I want you to have that presence presence so Moses said if your presence will go by the way that's that's something I, I don't want to live without a person. Now, the Holy Spirit is a person like the person next to you. How do we know? Because the Holy Spirit has all the attributes of personality that you need, except a body, which is not actually a component of a personality. Because when a person dies, what is in the coffin is not a person. It's just a container. The real person is gone, which is why you are crying. You are crying because the person is no longer here, which shows you that the body isn't part of the personality. 
So, no, no, relax, relax. The, the, the real person is departed. And the scripture says, the body without the spirit is dead. That's when death happens, when the spirit is gone. The body is just a container. Now, that, by the way, that's the same way the body of Christ is dead without the Holy Spirit. The body of, the body of, it's, imagine Adam created from mud. Okay, lying there. This is just by the way, lying there, arranged in mud. Okay, and then God forms intestines and eyes and lips and a nose. And Adam must have been handsome. Not like us, we have had some sin down the line that has messed up the chains. But there he was, so beautiful all done, finished with everything muscles, he must have had muscles in six months yeah, he wasn't like us no, he was something special, wonderful, perfect and as he lay there beautiful but dead wonderful but dead perfect in every way but dead that's how Christianity can be well dressed but dead beautiful music but dead Beautiful dancing, but something is empty. Air conditioning or heating or whatever you people are using here. It's bad, but something is not alive. And then God reached down. <sighs> Breathed into Adam. Everything changed. The same eyes, but this time they were moving. See, you come alive when the presence of the Holy Spirit is there. You come alive. The church comes alive. The same service they switched yeah. and when the person switched the song was the same but something switched. because there's something that you can't explain this is the greatest thing that man can have the presence of god it's like always people spend a lot of time praying anyway i don't want to go too far no, shh, listen listen i beg you i beg you i beg you let's behave i'm in my father's church i don't want to behave now listen Personality. What are the what are the components of personality? A will. This pulpit is not a personality because it doesn't have a will. If you move it to the left, it won't say I prefer to be on the right. It has no will. But the Holy Spirit has a will. Scripture says in First Corinthians 12 that He gives to every man as He will. It's, it's not a force or an influence. That's what I'm trying to explain. He's a person. The Holy Spirit has knowledge. He has intellect. The Bible says we know the mind of the Spirit. First Corinthians chapter two. So the Holy Spirit has a mind, like he can say, I don't like you. I don't want to be with you. He has a will, like he chooses. I don't want this person, I prefer to be here. No offense. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I prefer. I have been out here. I prefer. He has preferences. He has a will. He has a mind. I don't think so. I don't want that. I prefer you didn't do that. He has a will for your life. Now, it is not a force or a pervading power or some liquid that when we are there, then it falls on us. He's a person like the one you are next to. And he's here tonight. He wants to meet you. And so, um, a lot of people spend time, I was going to say, a lot of people spend time praying for things. But, there are certain things God cannot give you. I've learned. There are certain things that come with God. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 3, in his, in speaking of, of the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Wisdom, in, in this chapter, even refers to him as a woman. He says, he says the pronouns her. You guys are to pronounce it here nowadays. <laughs> Let me be careful. I'm on this. Shaky ground here, I know. Now, <laughs> it says, in her right hand, riches and honor. In his left hand, length of days. It comes with God, like it's in his hands. Wow. He can't give it to you, it comes with him. 
So when when God, you see, you see if if this was if this was the Lord, definitely God forbid. But no, sit down, sit down, sit down. Okay. hold these. No, no, hold these two. No, no, two. My brother, <laughs> definitely not the Lord. Two of them. Very good. So 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 when when the Lord comes come into my life, He comes with riches and honor, and He comes with length of days. That's why Enoch lived for a long time because he walked with the Lord. So long life came to him. I, I, you know, if I if I don't succeed at anything, and tonight I'm able to succeed at making you believe that what you need is the presence of God. You don't need anything else. I don't know who told you you need what. Riches. And the Lord was with Joseph, and he was. He was a prosperous man. It comes with the Lord. With him. You know what the Bible says in Romans chapter 8, I think in verse 32. He says, he says, if God spared not his own son, okay, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him? You see, with God, he gives you all things. God has never intended to give you things without God. With God, he gives you all things. Yes. With him. You know what he says? He says, and I know you know this one, with God, all things are possible. Yes. It's not been possible because of who you are with. It says with men it is impossible. But with God. Sit down, sit down, sit down. I don't know why you're standing. I want you to sit down. You know, this is my greatest aim. Is to have the presence of God. And so, you know, in Genesis chapter 15 verse 1, he told Abraham, I am your reward. I, not, not the child Isaac. Not the riches. Not the cattle and the thousand. It's the iron. I, my presence is your reward. So I want you to, I just want to share with you about the presence of God in your life. What it does. You know, this is what we feel. What we sense is the manifestation of his presence. When we, when we lift our hands to sing, and we lift our hands to worship him, what you, what you, you know that there's something in the room. Even an unbeliever knows that there's something in the room. Yeah. That thing is not for church. I used to work in a bank in London and typing at my desk many times tears would come down my eyes. I was in the presence of God. Yes. And that's the great you know, back then I didn't even understand what, what, what exactly is the presence of God. Yeah. But the presence of God is going to change your life. God, God with us. So he says the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because grace comes through Jesus Christ. That's how we got saved by grace are you saved through faith. Then he talks about the love of God because God so loved the world that he sent his son. But in terms of fellowship, communion, being with God, being alone, you see, you think you need a beloved. And you think you need a job. Everybody has things they think they need. So if I was to go around and pass a paper and say, write down what you need, you all write different things, but I tell you what you need, what you need is the presence of God. It's what you need. And so, with my next 30 minutes, I know I can see I'm being advised. God bless you. No. <laughs> I just want to share with you the presence of God. Then we're going to lift our hands and just experience His presence. And then we'll take an offering. And then we'll take tithes. And then we'll take announcements. And then we'll share the grace and then we'll go home. So I want to share with you what is in the presence of of God, the glory and the goodness of God. Okay? Are you there? What does it mean when you say God's presence comes into your life? That's what I want to share with you. Exodus chapter 33 verse 14 My presence will go with you. Oh, I could be here forever and I will give you rest. I'll give you what? Rest. If thy presence go not with me, carry us not up hence. For wherein shall it be known here that I and thy people have found grace in your sight? Is it not in that thou goest with us? So shall we be separated, I and thy people, from all the people that are upon the face of the earth. The difference between you and the people at work is the presence of God. Is that God should go with you. I'm saying you can be a Christian and not have the presence of God in your life. I'm preaching from our prophet's book, The Anointing and the Presence. The presence of God is different from when you get saved presence of God is God with us. When you get saved, the Holy Spirit comes to live in you. 
but God with us is completely different. And so this evening, I just want to share with you what is in the presence of God. What does it do to a Christian when you, are, when you have the presence of God in your life? And I'm almost done. He says, um, the Lord said to Moses, I will do this thing also that thou hast spoken, for you have found grace in my sight, and I know you by name. And Moses said, I beseech you, show me thy glory. Everybody say, show me thy glory. Show me your glory. The first thing that's in the presence of God is the glory. The glory of God. The glory of God. The glory of God is the beauty of God. It's what's beautiful about serving God. It's the glory. When the presence of God is gone, what is beautiful is gone. What is nice? You are weak and sinful. If the Holy Spirit was to levitate all those who have watched pornography in the last week, <laughs> levitate like everyone would rise up. We don't have to close the service. We are weak, empty, sinful. But what's beautiful about you is the presence. Now, the glory of God, in the Old Testament, people couldn't see the glory of God. When Moses asked this question, show me your glory, God said, no, I can only show you my back. Because the glory of God is the face of Jesus. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 6. 2 Corinthians, if he's fast, then we'll come back. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 6. God commanded the light to shine out of the darkness that shined in our hearts to give light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. So Moses was not allowed to see the face of Jesus Christ. Because only the Holy Spirit could reveal Jesus. Remember, he shall testify of me. And the Holy Spirit was not yet given, if you remember from Scripture. So, God, Moses said, show me, I want to be in your presence. Show me your glory, because that's the first thing. And God said, no, if you see my glory, you'll die. Because you can't handle it. But God has sent us the Holy Spirit, which we are allowed to fellowship with. That's why Jesus died. Jesus died, you know, in the beginning, in Genesis, God created man after his own image, okay? And um, after his own likeness, okay? Now, why did he do that? Because he wanted to fellowship with us. Because two species must be alike to be able to communicate. That's why you never see your cat and your dogs chatting. Or you never, you never see your fox, a fox on the road, and your dog having a chat. You never see... You see, because you can. So God created us so that we could relate and chat and fellowship. That's always been his intention. He didn't intend to make people who follow some laws. He intended to be close to all of us. So, what happened? Isaiah 59, the Bible says, our sins have separated us between us and God. So when Adam and Eve sinned, there was a gap between God and the people. That gap was bridged by the cross when Jesus Christ died. And so when Jesus died, if you remember, uh, the Bible says in John chapter 3, verse 16, that word, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him, this was the whole point, should not perish but have something called eternal or everlasting life. Now, what is everlasting life? What does it mean? Most of us just think it means to live forever. But no, John chapter 17, verse 1. John 17, verse 1. It says, This word spoke Jesus and lifted up his eyes to the heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son, uh, my, that he may glorify thee. Verse 2. As thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life. Do you remember eternal life? Yeah. To as many as thou hast given him. 3. And this is life eternal, that they might know you. So Jesus died so that we could know him. And the, the, the gap between us will be bridged. And so the, the first day in the presence of God is the glory of God. The glory of God, something beautiful. And when we are in his presence, we experience the glory of God. Now, what does the glory of God do? The first thing is the glory of God brings us from death into life. When Lazarus was dead, Jesus told Mary, did I not tell you that if thou shouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God? Because what brought Lazarus from death into life was the glory of God. Now, that's what brings dead Christianity to life. I want, I'm, I'm, my points are very simple today. When you start having the presence of God, the deadness, 
Has that happened to you before? Everything is dead. God is far. Too many ejaculations. So now God feels far. I'm talking to you practically. Too many sins, too many lies. When I sing a song, I don't feel anything. When I open the Bible, it feels dead. I feel very far from God. I don't feel like coming to church. I don't feel like talking to anybody. I don't feel like going for outreach. I don't feel, I just feel dry. Has that happened to anyone before? There's nothing like the presence to bring you back to life. Make you shine. The glory of God. So when you have the glory of God in your life, you come back to life. Many times it's happened to me before. I feel dry. I feel dry. Sometimes if I go and preach, I feel dry. I just feel empty. Try, read this, listen to this, do this. Do this. You need to learn how to enter his presence. The Bible says, come before him with singing. So we are in Birmingham. How do we come, go from Birmingham into the presence of God with singing? It's really easy. So the glory, the glory brings, if your Christianity was dead, your walk with God, your, the whole thing, it feels empty. What you need. I, I tell you to pick up this book. This book changed my life. Yeah. Sit down. That which brings me to my next point. The glory of God changes you. I, well, I may have to end on this point. The glory of God changes you. The glory of God changes you. It changes you. That's why you, you come to church and you see, you feel empty. Empty is the best word I can use. It happened to me many times. That's why we say, in your presence. time for one month but when you start to sing you suddenly how many of you start to feel the Lord may be a little closer than I thought expressions of your life revelations revelations of your power in your presence in your presence I can be the glory of God Lord, if I've found favor in your sight. Second Corinthians 3.18 Lord, please hear my I'm desperately waiting. I'm desperate. ah, To be where you are. To be where I'll cross. I'll cross. You didn't come here to hear from you. You came here to experience the presence of God. Travel near. I'll do anything for your glory. For your glory. I'll do anything. I'll go anywhere. I'll pay anything for your glory. Just to see. Thank you, Holy Spirit. It's my favorite part. See, it doesn't matter how dry you feel. There's something about worship. That's the glory. See, this is the glory. You don't even know, like, the bills you left are still waiting. The heartbreak from your last breakup is still waiting for you. But suddenly, when you're in His presence, the glory, the glory, it just, it changes everything. Now, listen, listen, you guys, behave, behave. Oh, I know, I feel it too now. Oh, what are you doing? Put up my scripture. Put up my scripture, my friend. 316. Put it up. We all, with open face, beholding us in a glass. The what? No, no. Read the scripture. The what? The The glory. What happens to us when we see the glory? We are changed. That's why you come to church and people don't change. Go to a church, the pastor preaches, nobody changes. Look, when I attended this church, First Love Church, London, Look, those were, those were difficult days. My God, I've been through a lot in this church. Yeah, there are some places in London I don't go. Because they remind me of tough times. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, oh, yes, oh, yes. Africa is easier, I tell you. <laughs> what I remember about my church, what I remember is there was a presence. There's a presence. You know, my friend Ben, 
Also not too correct. Not too correct as a man. <laughs> yeah, my friend Ben. He used to sing this song. As we gather in this place today, every Sunday morning, Holy Spirit, I remember, look, I remember many issues. What I can say, issues. I can't, I wish I could express myself. Issues. And I can't say, I can't say in case somebody is forced to be sure, but issues and problems. But I remember this, a presence, when he was singing this song. Oh, yes. Have your way then something about our desires as we lay aside our own yeah, yeah. sweep across our hearts with holy fire now this is what I remember this was the atmosphere of the church in this atmosphere you are changed that's why you have your quiet time and you are still the same you know, I've come to see humans can't change humans. You will have meetings and discussions. You know, it takes a lot for someone to say I'm wrong. In fact, in fact, you marry and see. You see, I'm wrong, but. I'm wrong, but. All of us have buts. Oh, yes. When I tell my wife I'm wrong, but. And she also tells me she's wrong, but. We all have buts. Yes, in the church, in the church, you are the one who went to fornicate. You did it. And now they've got you. No problem. But now you are offended about how you were treated about something. I mean, you are the one. But no one can ever. I'm telling you. I, I'll come to that. I'll come to that. Who did it? Who, who caused this? That's why people don't change. That's why, so, when, so when Moses went to meet God in the, in the bush, Okay, the Bible says, and an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a bush fire. Okay, the fire that was not going out. Whatever. That was an angel. So Moses came back the same. But in Exodus 33, he met the Lord himself. That was different. So by Exodus 34, verse 29, the Bible says, Moses countenance. His, 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 he was transformed. It's one thing to meet an angel, huh? It's one thing to meet the Lord. We are changed. We have been changed, though. I've been completely changed by the Holy Spirit. And I've been changed, the Bible says, from glory to glory. You know, you don't even know that you're proud. You, you wear it as a badge of honor. Hmm? Madam, a badge of honor that a lot of people don't like you. A badge of honor. I mean, how? Everybody in the church knows that you are wicked. I mean, yeah. And they tell you that, yeah, yeah, when we want to get things done, then we'll call you. Oh, please. You don't have the fruit of the Holy Spirit. You've not been in fellowship. You've not been in fellowship. I'm telling you, you have the gift, yes. I learned that from Derek Prince. Two trees, the Christmas tree and the normal tree. Okay. The Christmas tree has gifts. It happens in one day. December 25th, it's packaged and given to you. Here's your gift. You speak in tongues, it's a gift. You preach, it's a gift. But the fruit. Look, my wife and I have two fruits. One is James, one is Amy. To get those fruits, what we had to go through. First of all, we had to marry which is a journey by itself yes you are on that journey yes the next thing we have to do is take off all our clothes then we have to be attracted to each other then we have to try once twice three times i don't why do you think your pastor's wife's stomach is big do you think it's a lot of kfc that's that's what that's the intimacy so look so look she's not going to get pregnant she's not going to get pregnant even this will not get you pregnant. To, for her to carry my fruit, what has to happen cannot be uttered in this mind. And to carry the fruit of the Holy Spirit, the level of fellowship that is needed. A gift is, happens in one day. A gift happens. Thank God that you can preach. Thank God. But the, the fruit or, or the result of being in God's presence and being in His fellowship and living in His presence is love. 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 Not accuracy. Love. Not everything has to be straight. The Bible says, why are you making straight that which God has made crooked? You can't straighten everything in life. You are not loving. Yeah, after this, I'm going to Africa so I can preach my message. Because you are never in the presence of God. You are never in the presence of God. Yes, you have your quiet time, but you are not in the presence of God. The Lord is not there. Yes, you pray, but God is not there. The Bible says, call on him while he's near. There's no point praying and he's far away. So we don't change. 
you've not become more joyful. The more we meet you, the more depressed we feel. When we see you sitting somewhere in church, we try to avoid you in case you call us into a conversation. Because you, you carry a moroseness. But glory and honor are in his presence. And gladness is in his place. Where he is, there's gladness, there's joy. That's why you're where you are. I've been changed. I've been changed. When Jesus went up to see Moses and Elijah in their glory, what happened? He changed. His countenance began to glisten. You'll be changed. You'll be transformed. When you experience the glory of God, you'll change. You'll become something else. That's why we must be in his presence. That's why when you come to church, it's more important about what atmosphere you're in than what you're going to preach. Oh yeah, it's more important what atmosphere. Who is speaking? Who is guiding? Do you think I care what you think about my preaching? Do, do, is that what you genuinely think? That's the genuine opinion you have? Or whether you think I'm good at preaching or not? Hi. For his glory. For his glory. Anything. Anything. I'll do anything. I'll say anything. I'll go anywhere for the presence of God. I've been changed. Have you been changed? I can't stop. You can't stop. Of course you can't stop. Of course you can't stop. With men. It is impossible. With God. The presence of God. You'll be changed. Have you changed? I've become smarter. Yeah, I used to learn hard to be 12th in class. I used to learn hard to be 12th. Out of 25, by the way, it's not like out of 200. <laughs> out of 25, it's not so far. You know, my wife, my wife was once third in class and her dad beat her up. Okay. I'm bringing shame to the family for being third. Okay. She was only first. Oh yes, not me. I was 12th. I was 12th in class. When the Holy Spirit came into my life, he's my best friend. Because people let you down. People let you down. No, they don't mean to. They don't mean to, but they let you down. When you go home, throw your suitcase to your, your two-year-old child to carry. Why did they let you down? Because they can't. They can't bear it. It's too heavy. It's too heavy. You'll be changed. Have you been changed? When Bishop Richie used to preach, I used to, I, he's, you know, up till today, I hear his voice in my, in my ears. When I live, I hear, I always tell my pastors, my pastor told me this. Always, you hear me tell, my pastor, he taught me this. He showed me that this will happen. How about you? You know, no one can tell you that you are proud. Oh, yes. Do you remember when you were proud? No one could tell you. Whenever, whenever it was, nobody could tell you. Then one day, in his presence, in his presence, in his presence, ha, ah, you'll be changed. I don't want to be the same. I don't want to stay the same. I don't, I'm telling you, you can carry the highest titles. That's why people come to church. They can be pastor, LP, reverend, bishop, uncle, pope, mother, two. Titles don't change you. Titles don't change you. Moses came back. He didn't even know. He has changed. I'm not the same. That's why pastors, we have to preach in the presence. Yeah. When the priest came from the holy place, the cloud filled the house. There was a cloud. And the Bible says, what is my favorite part? The priest could not stand to minister. I wish more pastors would not minister and allow God to speak. There's something about the presence of God. There's something about the presence of God. Go with me. The glory. The glory. What's beautiful? What's beautiful? Don't lose the presence of God in your life. I'm saying that the word of God can be preached when the presence of God is not there. You won't change. As we behold the glory, we are changed. You know what's most beautiful? We are changed into the same image. We look more and more like him. We look more and more like him. That's what the Bible says. When we shall see him, we shall be like him. We become more like God. I'm more like God than I was last year. Do you want to change? Learn it. Learn the presence of God in your room. Sit in your room. And just be alone with him. Learn how to practice his presence. Learn how to invite his presence. Learn how to enter into his presence. I wish we had time. Oh, I'd have taught you how to enter. No, no, no. We have a few points. Sit down, sit down, sit down. It's not easy. I didn't know that we use handkerchiefs in this country. I thought it's only Africa. It's not easy. I think an air conditioning problem on this trip, but that's fine. <laughs> ah, you'll be changed. Ah, Acts 7.55. Acts 7.55. Oh, thank you, Lord. 
Acts 7, 55. What does it say? And this Stephen, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked steadfast into heaven and saw the glory of God. The glory of God. I'm just showing you places where people were changed by the glory of God. Acts 6, 15. Stephen saw the glory. That's why when God said, when Moses said, let your presence, if your presence will not go with me, I will not go. The first thing was, show me your glory. That's the first thing in the presence. The beauty. And look at it. The Bible says his face was like the face of an angel. That's Stephen. It's changed. Moses' face was changed. Jesus was changed from the glory of God. Right. When the word of God is preached, you don't have to talk much. Yes. Have you not heard someone sharing a verse that you just quoted recently? And it suddenly sounds different. Yes. I remember, I remember hearing prophet one sharing, the presence will go with you and I'll give you rest. My presence will go with you and I'll give you rest. We were in a studio. I just remember the awesome presence. I think Kent, you were there. The kind of presence in that studio. My God. We couldn't even stand. There was something in the room. Somebody's there. You know, when Captain Coleman died, she told God that she wanted roses. And so all the people who worked in the hospital said the whole hospital smelled of roses. There were no roses there. The whole place smelled of And no one could go into the room for hours after she died. Yes, for God took her. You have no idea. That's what we are fighting for. Not, you see, you want your church to grow. He that abideth in me, the same, brings forth much. I know you brought forth some. I'm talking about much. It's from God. You are looking for the wrong things. You are searching for the wrong things. You are searching for the Oh, I want to do well. I want to do well in school. I want to do well in school. I want to become more intelligent. Maybe you're like me. Me, I learned to be 12. You understand? Yes. But I graduated with the first class, by the way. Yes. Graduated first class, distinction in my master's, call to the bar. Number three in my class. Bring your notes. Yes. <laughs> Who did it? Who did it? It was the Lord that advanced. It was the presence of God. For God was with him. I tell you, there's no other key. There's no other key. God is with me. That's what I'm looking for. Every day I'm afraid he'll leave. In fact, I don't even know if it's a good thing, but every time I'm afraid he'll leave. Every time I get up to preach, I wonder, will he come? Will he come? Will he be there? Will he help me? He's, I prefer his approval to yours. Oh yes. I prefer his presence to yours. So my prayer is, by the time we close, oh wow, the Lord will be with you. That's all. I want you to go home and like, you don't even feel like talking to anyone. I want you to lie on your bed and feel that you're not alone. I want your quiet time to be completely changed. I want you to stop, stop calling it I'm going to read my Bible and start saying I'm going to fellowship with you. Yes. I, I, I want the presence of God to go with you. You'll be changed. You'll be changed. I, I'm, that's my first point. Glory of God. Number two. <laughs> I pray I pray about it. Number two. The goodness of God. Oh. The goodness of God. He says, he says in um, Exodus 33, 19, I will make all my goodness pass before. You see, when Moses said, show me your glory, or when Moses said, let your presence go with me, or when God said, my presence will go with you, then God started to describe what it means. And the first thing he said was that, the glory, the presence in the presence is the glory. The, the glory, I feel, like, I feel like moving on from the glory, but I tell you, the glory of God is the beauty of God. So, if you remember, when Eli lost the ark, do you remember? Eli, the ark was lost and his sons, his two sons died, Phineas and Hophni. The scripture says, when Eli heard that the ark was lost, he fell down, broke his neck and died. Not when he heard that his sons were dead. They came to tell him, your sons have died and the ark is lost. Then the scripture says, when he heard that the presence was lost, because you will survive the death of your only two sons. Trust me, I survived the death of my brother. You survive it. You survive that breakup. You survive the loss of a job. You survive repeating university. You survive your overdraft. You survive a lot of things, but you won't survive the loss of God's presence. You'll make it. And it came to pass when they made mention that the ark is gone. I can't take it if my sons are gone. The presence of God. The presence of God. Oh, I feel his presence. The presence of God. I don't know why you're standing still. What are we talking about? The goodness of God. The goodness of God. 
the goodness of God. The goodness of God is what makes you happy. Sad Christians don't have the goodness of God. Zechariah chapter 9, verse 17. Zechariah chapter 9, verse 17. The goodness of God. Look at it. How great is his goodness? How great, how, how great is his beauty? Corn shall make the young men cheerful and new and the maids. Cheerful. Are you sad? The good part of God. I love you, Lord, for your mercy never fails me. All my days, I've been held in your hands. From the moment I wake up until I lay my head, I will sing. Sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. <laughs> oh, I feel, I feel, I feel blessed. The goodness, the goodness. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire. The most important thing to hear when you are in trouble is the voice of God. You know, me, me, people have really hurt me. People have really hurt me. That's what I feel as I'm standing. I feel I've been hurt. I love his voice. I love his voice. Take everything. Take everything. Leave me God. Take everything. I've learned it. I didn't used to think that way, but I've learned it. You have led me through the fire. In darkest nights. You are close like no other. This is how I preach. I preach and sing because I haven't learned how to do it properly yet. I've known you as a father. I've known you as my friend. I have lived the goodness of God. The goodness of God. The goodness of God is what makes you happy. Are you sad? Are you sad? In his presence, there's fullness of joy. Are you sad? Are you sad? You laugh. That's why people start to laugh in God's presence. Yeah, that's why, that's why there's a manifestation of the laugh. Nobody just laughs. Somebody made you laugh. God has made me to laugh. Or oh, even better. Or oh, even better. Or oh, even better. Or oh, even better. You see, the Bible says, even though we have not seen him, yet we love him. And we are filled with joy unspeakable and full of glory. There is an unspeakable joy that has the presence and the glory of God in it. It's unspeakable. It's a joy that has glory in it. That's why people laugh in God's presence. Are you sad? Oh, do you think I'm talking about, do you have reasons to be sad? I have a thousand. But my God has made me to laugh. My God has made me to laugh. Sad Christianity. It's not because you don't have a beloved. By the way, speaking of beloveds, the reason you don't have a beloved is because you don't have the presence of God. That one is for tomorrow. That one is, I just remembered. I just remembered. No, because I don't have that many sermons, so I have to rush in it so that I can finish. Yes. <laughs> sit down, sit down. My God has made me to laugh. My God has made me to laugh. Psalm 107 verse 9. The goodness of God is what satisfies you. He satisfies the longing soul and filleth the hungry soul with goodness. Satisfied. I don't need anything else. Psalm 65 verse 4. Psalm 65 verse 4. I don't need anything else. When I have the goodness of God. Blessed is the man who thou choosest and causes to approach unto you that he may dwell in thy courts. We will be satisfied the goodness that's why you keep having sex no no I'm serious let me talk let me talk I'm talking to somebody seriously you keep on having sex okay let me talk to the girl first my dear listen the reason why you keep on sleeping around is because you are looking for love yeah. nobody's ever told you maybe you're looking to be wanted and to be accepted do you know there's a reason why people get offended in churches because I came to the church because the guys who invited me made me feel wanted. And I'm here because of how I was treated. When that treatment changes, I'm out. Because I came here because of them. But you should have come here because of him. You're looking for somebody to just accept you. And it seems you are most wanted. 
when your legs are open. I want you to know in his presence. In your presence, first thing, I am content. So, the woman at the well, she had a bucket and seven husbands and an extra guy, like a KFC meal, quick side. <laughs> oh, Jesus. I need to remember I'm not at home. Now, now, <laughs> she came every day. She came in the afternoon, which is not when Hebrew women fetch water. Because in the afternoon, the sun was up, so most came in the morning. But she didn't want to be around the other woman because they all knew her lifestyle. She wanted to be alone because she had had seven husbands and an eighth one. And you can understand why she didn't marry the eighth one. Because if it doesn't work seven times, even a righteous man is only allowed to fall seven times. <laughs> So she takes her bucket and every day she goes. Will it be this man that satisfies me? Will it be this one? Will it be this one? Will it be this one? Some of you grew up with absent parents or busy parents waiting for somebody to love you. And you think marriage is going to do that for you. Take it from me. <laughs> it's not. It's not. It's not. Marriage will not solve that. Marriage is a gift from God. My wife is a gift from God to me. Yeah. My wife is God's gift to me to add to my life, not to fulfill it. Yes. As wonderful as our marriage is, it cannot fulfill. I'm not enough for him. No. He's enough. He is enough. So the woman met Jesus. Jesus said, you want to keep on using that bucket he who drinks from this bucket will thirst again drink from me you will never thirst again you will never thirst again you will never thirst again I need more money no I need another job no I need a better beloved no they are all the same they are all the same I need you God I need your presence I need you in my life I don't want to hear from you from a book. I don't want people to tell me about you. I want to know you. I want to feel that you are in a room. I want to know that you are near. I want to know that you are with me. I want to hear your voice. I want to speak back to you. I need you, God. I need you. I need you. I need a miracle. No, you don't need a miracle. He is the miracle. You need him. I need you, Lord. I've been drinking from this bucket for a long time. I need you, Jesus. I need you, Jesus. I've been drinking for a long time. It's the only time I feel like myself. I've been crying. I got addicted to the spirit of heaviness. And so every night I lie on my pillow and I cry into the pillow every single day. And it actually makes me feel better. I actually usually feel like going home to be alone and be depressed. Yeah, that, that's not enough. But I'm talking about the one you go home with. 
From the moment that I wake up Till I lay my head I will sing You know, I wish I had known this earlier. I wish I knew this when I lived in London. I thought I needed somebody. I needed him. We are complete in him. We are complete in him. We are complete in him. The goodness of God. The goodness of God. Now, sit down. Do you know that there are about seven points away on number two? And definitely, there's no way we're going to. I'm ending in ten minutes. Oh, the goodness keeps us from fainting. Psalm 27 verse 13. Psalm 27 verse 13. I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of God in the land of the living. Do you know anyone who used to be in church who left? It's not about what they said it was about. First of all, they never say what it's really about. Whatever they said, it's not about that. I'll, I'll show you why. How many of you have ever thought of leaving the church before? And I join you. First of all, I'm first in this room. Good. Good. Why? There's something called fainting. Fainting happens when you are tired and dehydrated and, and you've not eaten well and you've been going without rest. Without rest, you faint. My presence will go with you and I'll give you rest. Without, without the presence of God, you just get tired. I can't take it anymore, you know? I just... It's too much. Like... I've been in this, I've been in this choir for like two years, and no one ever comes on time. I've had enough. <laughs> nah, no, for real, man. I'm done. I'm not having it. I'm not having it. I'm done. It's over. <laughs> it's not easy. Oh. It's of pastoring this church all the time ah, no fam no. forget that no, I'm not it. No. allow it man no. I'm not having it no. I'm tired I'm tired I'm tired I won't come for the prayer meeting anymore I'm tired I'm tired I'm, I'm done Sometimes they even ask you why I've done the church. You don't have a reason. I'm, I'm tired of your things. I had fainted. I had fainted. But they that wait on the Lord, they, they renew. I'm saying that quiet time is not, you must read your Bible as God doesn't like you. No. Quiet time is I want to have some alone time in the morning so that I can go with you to work. And then after that, I can go with you on your way to outreach or to visitation. And I can, I can help you with the visitation if you like. And then you have to preach on Thursday night. I'll go with you. And then where are you going? You're going to visit your beloved. I'll come with you guys. Can I come? That's the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. I want to come with you. I'll speak to you. I'll guide you. The Spirit speaks expressly. He speaks all the time. He spoke to me this morning. He spoke to me yesterday. He spoke to me this morning. He spoke to me when I walked in here. He spoke to me. He speaks to me. He speaks. You can learn to hear his voice. You can let you hear his voice. I remember when I finally discovered that you can actually just hear the voice of the Holy Spirit instantly. I was shocked. Oh, yes. I came to church and preached for like three hours how to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. I couldn't believe it. Yeah, and those guys really endured. Three hours, I have to tell you. They had no idea. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. How to hear. How to hear. I had fainted. I had fainted. That's why you stopped. It's not that you are hurt. All those things happened because... Outside of his presence, we are tired. Tired of going on outreach. I'm tired of it. First of all, you'll be tired because he's not with you. The Bible says you are with Jesus said you are witnesses of me, and so also is the Holy Spirit. You are never supposed to go alone. He didn't say, I don't know if I should. He didn't say you shall receive power after the Holy Spirit has come on you and you will start witnessing. He says you become, you will be changes you into a witness oh yes you don't know the holy spirit yes we always argue with people oh i know you don't believe but i, I know you don't believe but can i just leave this fly with you do you mind if i pray with you that's all you've been doing no what about when peter went to preach yemen and jews and their hearts were pricked by the holy spirit what about that you don't have that because you don't have the fellowship of those. i didn't know this so i've also been on these outreaches many times oh especially in the park oh, do you mind can i talk to you for five minutes no, if, if it's okay with you, we're all right. We, 
We, we, we've, oh, I've actually got a train to catch that right with you. I'm sorry. <laughs> I can walk with you. No, I, I'd rather not, if that's okay. <laughs> oh, Holy Spirit, we need you. Oh, sit down. Are you having a good time? I'm having a good time. I'm having a good time in the presence of God. Ah, Jesus. Romans chapter 2, verse 4, finally. This point, I think we have to close here. I'll end on this one. Romans chapter 2, verse 4. Despisest thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering, Not knowing that, not knowing that, the goodness of God leads to you repenting. Mm. You never change because you've never been in his presence. Oh, yes. Repentance means, I'm sorry. Repentance means to change your mind. I am completely wrong. No buts. The presence of God. In my life, you can ask my wife, I'm the most stubborn person you meet. Oh, yes. To make me change my mind, you made a mistake. You made a mistake. Yes. You can ask. Many times, it's in the presence of God. You've never repented. Should I tell you something? Repentance is not only before God. It's also before men. Did you know that? Yeah. You've never repented until you've gone to a man. I've sinned against God and against you. Yes. Yes. I've sinned against God and also against you. But you will never see that you are wrong until you are in the presence of God goodness of God, my brother. It leads you to say, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm wrong. I'm wrong. I was completely wrong. Look how you're talking now. If I had recorded your voice, listen to me, the Holy Spirit is speaking. If I had recorded what you are saying now, and I had played it to you four years ago, you say it can never be. I will never say that. If the day I say that something is wrong with me, look at you now, and you're, you're about to argue. As I'm preaching, you're arguing with me. No problem. No problem. The presence of God presence of God. You were wrong. You caused it. You caused it. You did it. It's your fault. You did it. No one else has done anything. No one else has done anything. And when you're in the presence of God, you take your phone and start saying, I'm sorry. I was wrong. I was wrong. So you see Isaiah. Woe to everybody. Woe to Israel. Woe to these people. Woe to that. Isaiah chapter 6 verse 1. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord. I saw the Lord myself. I saw him myself. Personally. Yeah. He noted the date. You always know when you meet the Lord. Benin will quote you the date he was in Pittsburgh and he met the Holy Spirit in Catholic Common Service. He'll tell you the date. A. Allen will tell you the moment he met the Holy Spirit in Oral Roberts meeting. And tonight you say, I met the Holy Spirit today. Yes. I saw the Lord high and lifted up. And his train filled the temple. All of you, those of you trying to fill your churches, it's his train that fills the church. Anyway. Verse 2, and it stood above the seraphims. Each one had six wings. With twain, he covered his face. He used two to cover his face, two to cover his feet. And with two, he flew. My God, what is this? <laughs> and one cried to another, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The presence of God. I saw the Lord. I saw his glory. Five. Five, my friend. Then said I, who is me? Who is me? Not who is them. Everyone who keeps on pointing what somebody else has done. It's not in the presence of God. When you when the presence of God, you only remember your sins. I'll show you how you know. Have you ever been praying? And then the atmosphere just changed. Alone sometimes. Sometimes even in church. And when the atmosphere changed, you started confessing yourself. Like just I said, like before we continue, Father, thank you so much. Just said, <laughs> I said, I'm talking to you. I'm, I'm trying to talk to you, please. Has it happened to you before? Yes, yes, yes. Like a quick one, quick one, Lord. I can see we're entering your presence. Like, oh Lord, I just want to say thanks. Sorry, so sorry. I just remembered. I just want to. And then all the ones I can't remember, Lord, wash me in your blood, Jesus name, Amen. So we can continue, yes. So that we can continue, yes, yes. Presence of God. I was wrong. I was wrong. I was proud. How I spoke. I lied. I lied. One day I was with my friend, Pastor Michael. He said, he 
some uh, a crusade director called him. He works in the crusades. And the crusade director called me. They're supposed to do some things every day. So he called, have you sorted out this, the generator, the, this, the, that, the, that, a long list. And Micah said, yes, I've done all. He hadn't done any. And he put the phone down and went to do all the things before the crusade director came back. So he finished it, he did it. Then he called me and said, he was praying. Felt so bad. That was all that kept coming to him. So he called the crusade director and he said, You know, I've done it now, but when I called you, I was like, I didn't do it. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. See, in the presence of God, no one comes to catch you. Yeah. Look, let me tell you something about truth. Okay. Truth, there are only three things that are true in the world Jesus, I'm the way, the truth, and life. The Holy Spirit, the Spirit of truth, and the Word, sanctifies by the Word, the Word is truth. Everything else is not true. So now, if I should ask, this is my pastor, Sicho. He was a pastor in my church before she abandoned ship. And uh, don't tell Bishop Richard, I said, it's just a joke. It's just a joke. Eh? Bishop Richard, I'm joking. <laughs> so in case it never comes up, I was joking. Now, cut it out. Yes. <laughs> now, if I ask him, Sicho, am I, am I proud? No. Huh. When I tell her, oh, 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 do you think I'm a humble person? Yes, me. And then if I ask her for reasons, she would tell her, even last time you did this and you were very kind to us. And when I even came to your office and I've also seen you doing it, don't you have many examples of humility? Uh -huh. But Sicho is not truth. Sicho is not truth. His word is truth. So somebody may say to you, including your pastor, yes. the biggest man of God may tell you you are good. Didn't what the Samuel say, surely this is the Lord's anointing. Oh, surely, surely, look at him. This is what God has chosen. This is the Lord's anointed. You're the biggest pastor in the world. I don't know who he is. The Pope can tell you, you are very good. You are very good. Well, you are a good pastor. You are a great guy, Charles. In fact, you are the main person we need. I call you a pillar. Sometimes I'm even praying. I just think of you. When I think of you, pray. He's not truth. There are things the prophet cannot see. No matter how great he is. Surely this is the Lord's anointed. God said, don't look at his stature. I've rejected him. But God sees not as man sees. There's only one thing that's true. I wear this truth. My spirit is truth. And it's in the presence of God. I remember praying on Canary Wharf with the book Formula for Humility. That's why I don't like calling it those who are proud. I call it Formula because I remember praying. I remember God showing me that I am a very proud person. And I remember holding that book in the middle of the night, walking up and down, praying for humility. Because only the presence of God can reveal to you who you are. And I wish more Christians would spend every morning